everyone. Welcome back to Triple Goddess Soapery. My name is Angela, and today we are making witches' cauldrons. These are bath bombs. And if you can hear a cat purring in the background, um, my apologies. He decided he wants to sit on my desk with me while I record this. Uh, before we get started, although I am already going on the uh, screen, I'm recording this on October 18th. Tomorrow, October 19th, is my birthday. Woohoo! And for my birthday, I would love it if you would hit like and subscribe on this video if you have not already. That is what I would like for my birthday. All right. So when I make bath bombs, I measure out all of my dry ingredients into the bowl. I'm kind of lazy and I don't sift anything, but I'm not lazy in the way that I mix because I do everything by hand right now. So yeah, so what I do is I measure out all the ingredients in my bowl. This is a 2000 gram batch. And then I measure out all my liquid ingredients in a cup. And then I just dump it in, which you don't see in this video. And I do live in a fairly humid climate, uh, Western Canada. Uh, my soap studio without the dehumidifier usually runs around between 60 and 70% humidity. With the dehumidifier on and the door closed, I can usually get it to about 40% if it's very humid outside. Um, sometimes a little lower if it's not humid outside. So yeah. So that's, so that's the deal with that. And I'm not going to give you my recipe. Not because I don't want to, because that doesn't bother me. But because bath bombs are so specific to the creator, to the environment, to the where you live in the world that it really doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, that being said, you should go over to The Soap Chef on YouTube, and she has a beautiful step-by-step multi-video guide building bath bomb recipes. And that's where I went, and I've watched all her videos probably two or three times, some even more, and that's how I formulated this recipe. I started with her recipe, I worked my way through to her like super duper full recipe, and then I started tweaking it. And I got it to the place that I want. So yeah. So what I have done is I have mixed by hand all of my wet and dry ingredients. And when I was satisfied with that and the way it held together, I dumped in my citric acid and gave that a good mix. And now I've separated into four different bowls because I'm going to do four different colors and I'm starting to mix. So if you want to know how to mix colors, you should go over to Bath Fizz and Foam to their, their um, blog. You can Google Robin's color studies and it'll come right up. And basically she has color studies for all the major colors, basically just using four or five different lakes. So I have red one, red 27, yellow five, yellow six and blue one and those are the only lakes that i'm using tonight to make a really brilliant purple an acid green a nice bright orange and black and i'm not going to go through exactly the ratios that i use because you can find them on robin's blog and when you see me walking over to the computer over there i'm just double checking the ratios so basically for the green i'm mixing red five or so, sorry i'm mixing yellow five and blue one for green and i'm using more yellow than blue because i want it to be more of an acid green and for the purple i'm mixing red 27 and blue one for the orange i'm just using yellow six because that is the orange little cup there and for the black it's a mix of all four colors and at different ratios it's something like two 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 one and one but anyway you'll 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 see when you go look at her color studies and you can basically mix anything that you want with those four colors that i mentioned so i like to use lakes and i also use polysorbate 80 in my recipe um, for my embed colors you can see see the little ducky on the screen there are three or four bins under him four i think and I've mixed up four different, um, it's basically my basic bath bomb recipe without the, without the surfactants and it, they have dyes in them. And I use that as a, um, embed powder. Now, 
I don't particularly like it. I found it got kind of hard in the container. Maybe it just got like a little bit of humidity in there or whatever. But so I really have to like scrape it out when I want to use it as, as embeds. And it still fizzes just fine. So it's not really an issue. I was trying to be not lazy, but I didn't want to make like little square embeds. I wanted to just be able to use a scoop of powder in the middle of my bath bombs and call it done. But I think going forward, if I ever make my way through this embed powder, what I'm going to do is I am going to just make proper embeds. Anyway, I digress. So for these witch's cauldrons, I am putting a glow-in-the-dark stone in one of those little capsules. Uh, the glow-in-the-dark stones, of course, are not real stones, I bought at the dollar store. And I'm putting them in those little um, gumball capsules. And you can buy those on Amazon. That's where I got mine. I think I have three different sizes. And then I'm just filling up the um, the cauldron about halfway. I had measured it first, so I know how much they hold. Put in the capsule and top it off. And I'm not pressing the powder in too, too hard. Um, there were people that I watched online, and some of the comments that I heard was that if you press it in too hard, because the bath bomb is enclosed in the plastic cauldron, it'll take forever for it to fizz out. So if you pack, if you just pack it in very lightly, it'll fizz out faster. So, so, so that's why I do, however, think though, that I will probably fill them loosely and then I'll just pack the top a little harder next time. Cause they were a little powdery in the packaging, but it was no big deal. So right now I'm just filling up my orange and I will say that these colors the next day are even more vibrant. They're, they're beautiful. They were amazing. And I made 20 of these and I probably could have sold 30 or 40 of them. I did a market this past weekend and it was a fall festival, a fall harvest market. I sold them all in the first 45 minutes. So yeah, so I was a little disappointed that I hadn't made more, but you just never know how things are going to sell. So yeah, so that's that. So also too, these cauldrons, um, I bought, I want to say 48 of them for not a lot. Um, I'd have to check my Amazon, but I bought them on Amazon. There were packages of 24 and I think I paid maybe 14 or $15 a package for them, which is like the best price that I could find anywhere. And I will say too that it was too late for this year because I'm not going to make any more at this point because I don't have any more markets and my online sales are not like through the roof or anything. But you can also find, I couldn't find these cauldrons, but at the Dollar Tree in Canada, I did find skulls and two different color pumpkins, the same size as these cauldrons. So I picked up, I don't remember how many, I think a dozen of each. I think there was three or four different ones. So I'll be making them next year and I will be making at least twice as many next year as I did this year because they were a really huge hit. I was so impressed at how well they sold and, and it was really made me very happy <laughs> to, to have them like go over so well. And I don't show it in the video, but what I do is like once they're all done, I have these little plastic spiders that I had bought at the dollar at Dollar Tree as well, I think. Dollar Tree or Dollar M, I'm not sure. And they weren't rings, they were just little spiders in um in webbing. So I pulled them all off the webbing and I just took the spiders and I just pressed them into the top of each um, each cauldron. And I do have a picture and a video at the end that shows the finished product. And then I also used, I had bought some uh, moon shaped silver biodegradable eco glitter from Fizz Fairy. So I used that and sprinkled it on top of the, um, the cauldrons, pressed in the little spiders and to, I'm Pretty impressed I really was really happy with how they turned out um, really inexpensive uh, between the cost of the cauldrons the bath bomb mix and the inserts and the little spiders um, not only were they a really good price point as like as far as I'm concerned like I, I my cost of sales is really good I priced these at six dollars and like I said they flew off the table I had one lady come by and there was only four left and she bought all four. And I feel like she might've bought more <laughs> if I had more. So yeah, I highly recommend making these, if, especially if you're doing markets, in-person markets in October. Um, these are gonna go over really well. I also made some pumpkin bath bombs and some, I call them spooky gnomes, although I don't think they were very spooky, but 
and four to six of the pumpkins sold and i think i sold i sold a couple gnomes but that's it but the gnomes are pretty generic as far as coloring goes so i mean i'm, I'm just gonna keep them for my christmas markets because you know why not but yeah these were a lot of fun to make this entire um process and i did screw around a little bit because i wasn't prepared like here i am like um stopping to package up all of my little stones so that I don't have to mess around. Um, the whole process took about an hour and I've sped this up two and three times depending on the segment of the video to um, just you know make this not a one hour long video because it's certainly not a tutorial because I didn't even show you you know all of my measuring and mixing and stuff so so yeah. But these were, like I said, they were a lot of fun to make. Um, I, I really enjoy the color mixing and Robin's color studies because contrary to popular belief, I'm not very creative. And I find it fascinating that you can take four colors that are very bright and vibrant and you can make black with it. Like who, who would have thought, right? Also, too, when you're using lakes, like I said, you do need to use polysorbate 80 or some kind of emulsifier. Poly 80 is the best, in my opinion, and it's the easiest to use, too, for that matter. That way, any oils and butters you may have, as well as colors, will emulsify in the water and will not stain somebody's tub. Because the last thing you want to do is stain somebody's tub, because they're going to be very upset. I also did start... Um, using a little bit of my embed powder in these because a 2000 gram batch was just a tiny tiny bit not enough basically because i'm making five five bath bombs per 500 grams and i needed just a little bit more so i just basically started topping up each bath bomb in the center with a little bit of embed powder as well as the toy and that worked out really well i basically had no waste also really like this purple. Um, this is, like I said, this was the red 27 and the blue, the blue one, I believe. I also have Robin's, um, I mean, I'm just scrolling down. So yeah, so her color study says, it says two parts red 27 to one part blue one will get you purple. And I don't specifically recall if that's what my mix is, but it gave me a really nice shade of purple anyway. For my blue, I use one part blue one, and I would have, and I'm pretty sure I used three or four parts yellow five. Like I said, I don't really remember, but I definitely did more than just the one to one because it wasn't, um, it wasn't bright green enough for me. Now, I will try to remember to put links to the color studies, to the main color study as well as the black color study, because she has one that's called, when you Google it, it's choosing colorants for bath bombs, and she basically goes through how to make blue, yellow, pink, red, purple, green, and then you can just add more or less of, you can, you can change the ratio to make things lighter, or darker, or whatever. And then I also have the study in black. Um, my lakes, let's see, most of my lakes I bought from Windy Point Soap. Fizz Fairy is also a great resource for uh, lakes and dyes. I think I bought all of my dyes from Windy Point. It just worked out that way. And then what else? Uh, the cauldrons came from Amazon. I bought the glitter that you'll see at the end from Fizz Fairy, and it's called Moon. It was Moon Glitter. If if you Google their, if you look up their glitter and, and Google the moons, it's the only one. So it won't be that hard to find. Now I think when I did my black, I'm just gonna scroll down because I used for this shade of black, I used number five. When you're on her website and you scroll down, I used the number five one. Let me just go back up here. So 
So black five. So it's two parts red 40. Oh, I guess I have red 40 as well. Sorry about that. Two parts red 40, two parts blue one, one part yellow five, one part yellow six, one part red 27. I'm not sure which red dye I said that I was, or red lake I said I was using in the beginning. Maybe I did say red 40, I'm not sure. So yeah, so for, for the first round, it's two parts red 40, two parts blue one, one part yellow five, one part yellow six, one part red 27. Now, I did this at least four times, if not five times, to get the shade of black that you see. And I probably could have stopped one before that because I have noticed when working with lakes, um, the next day, the color is a little darker, a little more vibrant. And I don't know if that's just me and my imagination, but these turned out super, super duper jet black. Like, oh my God, dark, like super black. And I'm very pleased with how they turned out. But I, like I said, I could have probably stopped one level before and just used a little bit less flakes. Oh, I just stopped it. There we go. Alrighty, so we're nearing the end here, and I will have a few pictures here at the end, as well as a little video um, that I had posted on TikTok that just shows what the bath bombs look like right up close and personal. Again, I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you for um st sticking to the end and staying tuned for my content i really appreciate you you are the reason i do this and if you have not already as my birthday present please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel it really means a lot to to creators like me and it also means a lot to us to know that you like our content if there's anything specific you would like to see please leave a comment below and i will see what i can do And there is what the black looks like. And it gets, like I said, it gets even more black than that. And the final product with the spiders and the glitter.